Hello and welcome to Shifting Lanes. My name's Chad and today we are most definitely not talking about boring crossovers, boring family vehicles, although I guess some people do classify these as a family vehicle. No, today we are talking about the good old American and Japanese, which is more American than... Today we're talking about pickup trucks. Pickup trucks are without question the most versatile vehicles you can purchase today. Where else can you find a bare bones basic vehicle for under $30,000, but when you start adding options and trim levels and all this other stuff, you can top out well over $70,000. There is a pickup truck for every single need out there, and that is why they're the best-selling vehicles in America. A couple years ago, I had a Ram 1500 Limited. You want to watch my full review on the 1500, please click above me, I think here. I came away from that blown away, not by the vehicle's capability, which it has a lot, not by some next level new generation power plant that was destined to change the world, because let's face it, it has a 5.7 liter pushrod V8 with mild hybridization on it. We're talking maybe an extra 2 mpg if you're gentle on the highway. I was blown away by that truck for one simple reason, and that was the interior. It was way above what you'd expect a workhorse like a pickup truck to be. In fact, it was more high-end luxury car than it was everyday work truck. Rams of old, their interiors, well, if we're being, well, kind, they're crap. Fast forward to 2019 and holy cow, the Ram 1500's interior, especially in limited trim, is an absolute work of art. It is a symphony in simplicity. It has basically all the buttons you could want, a massive touchscreen display. It has cameras on the mirrors, cameras in the front, cameras in the back, which gives you a beautiful picture of what's around what, let's face it, is a rather enormous vehicle. I could not believe how easy it was to park. At the time, I had a Lexus IS300 sedan as my daily driver, and this Ram, this pickup truck, was way easier to park. It, it was just all the creature comforts you could possibly want. The Ram 1500 Limited just completely blew me away. It was an absolutely astonishing vehicle that is equal parts job site, farmland, off-road truck, and everyday family car, daily commuter, vehicle that you could take to the farm, clean up, and take to a valet at a nice restaurant with the family. It, it's just an amazing piece of kit. But it is far from the only pickup truck offering out there. Obviously, you have the granddaddy of them all, the sales king, that is the Ford F-150, you have the Silverado, and you have Toyota's Tundra, which of all these vehicles has more components built and assembled in America. So we're going to take a look at all of these trucks, and at the end, I'm going to tell you which ones you should buy if you are in the market for a full-size pickup. We start with the Toyota Tundra, which is the oldest truck we're going to talk about today. You can look at that in one of two ways. On the one hand, you have a vehicle that's old, maybe getting a little dated in some areas. On the other hand, the platform has been around for a while, so any issue it was going to have, it's likely had, and Toyota has fixed it by now. This means a supremely reliable vehicle. Just like all the other trucks we're going to talk about today, Toyota offers a wide range of vehicles on the Tundra platform. You do get a base option that gets you in the door all the way to an off-road option, which is the TRD Pro, and even a limited trim, which is a luxury truck. A notion that a few years ago would have made absolutely no sense to anyone, but you need a luxury truck these days if you're going to compete in the market. Engine options, well, you can have any engine you want from Toyota as as long as it's a 5.7 liter iForce V8. It is a very robust, very reliable, again, it's been around for a while, so it chucks out a decent amount of horsepower and torque, gives you plenty of towing, over 10,000 pounds. It isn't the latest and greatest, but it doesn't need to be because let's face it, if MPGs are a concern, you're, you're, you're shopping the wrong, the wrong platform. The Tundra is a very, very nice truck. However, it is a bit long in the tooth, and that shows not so much in the exterior, where I think it is a very handsome truck, if not now a bit common, just because it's been around for so long, but it really shows itself in the interior. When you compare the Tundra to, say, the Ford or even the Ram, it doesn't even come close to competing. You sit in it, and you immediately know you're in an older vehicle. Then again, this is still a truck, so if you need a truck to be a, I don't know, truck, Stuff like that may not be at the top of your priority list, but as you start getting into the higher trim levels, it really, really gets separated, gets gapped really by the Ford and by the Ram. Bottom line, the Tundra is a tried and true truck. And 
the vast majority of the parts are built and assembled here in America, specifically Texas, more so than even the American marks we're gonna talk about. So if you want an honest truck that's gonna get the job done, may not have every bell and whistle, may not be the latest fancy interior, the Tundra's for you. Next up is the Chevy Silverado. Now up until recently, the Silverado was number two behind the F-150. However, in recent years, Ram, well, Ram just knocked them right off that number two perch and pushed them down to number three. Personally, I feel it was because the Chevy interiors didn't quite live up in any trim to the competition. And when Chevy swung for the fences and gave kind of Tonka truck exterior to the Silverado, I, I don't know the best way to describe it, but it kind of cheapened the vehicle. Yeah, it was tough, but it was over the top. It was cartoonish. That's all changed. And the Silverado is now a very nice looking truck. Gone are the look at me styling for a more conventional look that is still very much a Silverado. Engine options for the Silverado, well, you have a lot of them. You have a 2.7 liter four cylinder engine. It is a bit small to lug around these big pickup trucks. So you are gonna work it a little bit harder than some of the other engines. So if it were me, I would opt for one of the bigger motors. You also have a 4.3 liter six cylinder engine, a 5.3 liter V8, a 6.2 liter V8, and a three liter straight six Duramax diesel option. The interior in the Silverado is is a very nice place to be. All the buttons are where you'd expect and they do have a very quality feel to them. Gives you everything you want. Great stereo, touchscreen display, navigation, cameras galore, all that sort of stuff. However, it does feel, dated's not the right word, but it doesn't feel anywhere near as modern as the F-150 or the Ram. Overall, the Silverado is just a good, honest, truck. It may not have all the bells and whistles, it may not be as nice a place to sit in as the Ram or the Ford, but it does everything you want from a truck. And unlike the Tundra, you have options galore. You can get that bare bones basic work truck that's only really used to haul stuff around, haul workers around, and just get beat on. You have the luxury option. You have many different engine options. You can price out what you want. You can get the engine to fit your price point, and it all works out very, very nicely. But it dropped the third, and it dropped the third for a reason, and that's because, in my opinion, you don't feel like you're getting the same for your money as you do in the Ram and even the new F-150. That all brings me to the F-150, and let's face it, it's the king, it's the daddy, it's the truck that has been winning the truck sales wars for as long as I can remember, maybe even as long as I've been alive, 37 years. I'm sure one of you can fact check me on that one. But the F-150 is the best selling truck on the market today for one very good reason. They do everything. They slay commercial sales with their basic truck that is like $28,000, $29,000. So you just need something to haul some stuff around. You don't need any sort of frills. You don't need four wheel drive. You don't need the latest and greatest engine. Boom, there's a truck for you. And then you have the Limited, the Raptor, just trucks that are way over the top in either luxury or off-road capability and everything in between. Ford offers a huge array of motors. You have a 3.3 liter V6, a 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6. You also have a 3.5 liter Power Boost Hybrid V6. Ford kind of set the segment on its head with the EcoBoost engine and they're continuing to do so with that hybrid engine. I'll touch on more of that in a second. So if all these V6s and turbocharging seems a bit complicated for your liking, Ford also offers a 5 liter V8, which is effectively the exact same motor they throw in the Mustang with just less compression, different intake manifold, and a different tune on it. The 5 liter Ford V8 is one of the most capable motors out on the market today. Thankfully, Ford has redesigned the exterior of the F-150. The previous models, like the Silverado, suffered from Tonka truck syndrome. It was just added toughness. It's like the guy at the gym who's putting a little too much audible effort into his reps. It was just trying too hard to look tough because trucks are supposed to be tough. Thankfully, the new F-150 is much more subdued, but still obviously a Ford, which is a great thing. Trucks aren't supposed to be elegant, but it has that tinge of elegance to it that makes it a much more street-friendly vehicle to look at. Another area Ford redid was the interior, and thank goodness for that, because the old interior in the F-150 really really let the truck down. Sure, in some of the more base models, it wasn't that big of a deal because again, you were using a truck as a truck and the interior wasn't as important as say it is in the upper trim levels like the Limited. The Limited was a truck that cost over $70,000 and the interior fell 10 years old. You really did not feel like you were getting much for your money on the interior as opposed to say, 
the Ram. The new F-150, it features a 12-inch touchscreen display, modern buttons, modern layout, and it definitely feels more of the era than it did a few years ago. And lastly, this is quite possibly Ford's party piece, and that is they are constantly pushing the envelope on technology in their pickup trucks. Sure, pickup trucks are supposed to be rugged, simple vehicles that are meant to do a job, and they don't really have the most modern bells and whistles. However, that hasn't stopped Ford from kind of changing the game. And now Ford is coming out with what they're calling the Power Boost V6, which is a 3.5 liter turbocharged V6 with hybridization that gives it 430 horsepower and a truly astonishing 570 foot-pounds of torque. The power is phenomenal and also it acts as a generator. So you get 7.2 kilowatts out of the rear bed in a normal plug to power your tools, your TVs if you're tailgating or anything like that. Hell, Ford even sent a bunch of these F-150s with the power boost option on them down to Texas because of the recent storm and so many people were out of power. They were just using these brand new trucks haven't been sold, they were just sending a fleet of these trucks down as mobile generator stations to help the people without power, which frankly is awesome, but it also goes to show the capability of what this truck can do. It proves that Ford is constantly pushing those boundaries on what a truck should do. All of this brings me back to our initial question. Should you buy the Dodge Ram 1500, or what should you buy if you are in the market for a full-size pickup truck? If you want a truck that has been tried and true and is tested, it may be older, but it's gonna be reliable, well then the Tundra's for you. Same can be said for the Silverado, but the Silverado does have more options. If you just want a basic truck with a basic engine and performance, really doesn't matter to you. All you need is something to lug around some stuff and some people. The Silverado has you covered. It also covers you all the way to say an off-road truck, a luxury truck with a big 6.2 liter V8, and kind of everything in between. If you want a truck with all the available options of the Silverado and then some, well then the f 150s for you. The F-150 is the daddy and like I said, it is by no accident. Ford has updated their exterior styling and interior styling, which I think has closed the gap significantly to the Ram. And that leaves me with the Ram. The thing with the Ram is is that it's just that interior. It was groundbreaking when they launched it and it just continues to just be the best in class. It is simple, elegant, refined, all the things you don't necessarily think you want in a truck, but when you have it, it's hard to go back to anything else. The Ram is the best looking outside, it's the best looking on the inside, it offers you the best options. Sure, it's not pushing the boundaries like Ford is, but you can still get a hybrid option if you want to save one or two MPG on the highway and vehicles that aren't really designed to save fuel. You, you can have that. that. That can be an option to you. It blends all things. It can do commercial, it can do luxury, and everything in between. I still believe it is the best truck on the market today. If you liked the video, found it helpful, found it informative, consider giving us a thumbs up. If you want to find your way back for more consumer advice, subscribe with notifications on. If you want to continue this conversation on social media, it's at Shifting Lanes. I personally am at Chennedy83. Trucks, love them. They're so versatile. They're great vehicles. I think the Ram is the best. You might disagree. Let me know down in the comments below. But for this one, that's a wrap, and I'll catch you next time.